soundtrack of our lives and Six Music's sister surround. You did use light list power. I've just said that. So I've, I've just been checking because I suddenly had a, a nightmare thought that I'd mixed you up with somebody else. No, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> no, no. I love that band. There's a funny story behind that tune, actually. The, the, uh, the guy that wrote it, Mateus, told me one night that he, it's, a, it's about his stereo and it was a, uh, it said a surround system. Really? On a thing he said, but he didn't, he couldn't, he, he changed it to uh, surround sister and then sister surround. So right. There you go, bit of boring information there for you. <laughs> but I remember one year, was it Reading, I think? Because you know at Reading Festival, Reading yeah. are like all big festivals, by the end of the day you can't move side of stage for people yeah. trying to watch their favourite band. But you turned up early, I think, to watch. On, yeah. yeah, you were, were there, fun, I yeah. think. We just come back from America with them as well. I love them, I've got to say, that, but, and that particular album, uh, Behind the Music, is, if nobody's got it, I kid you not, one of the great albums of the last 15, 20 years. It's incredible. Mm. Yeah. And what have you been listening to recently, and did it help shape what you were writing? Because when we spoke about your last album, there were a couple of key things you'd been listening to, and you said, oh, that one, I've just been listening to the Kinks, Village Green Preservation Society, um, this, I've been listening to this. One, well, no, I don't really listen to, like, you know, or base what I do on one particular thing. But one, well, the opening track on the album is heavily influenced by a, a one-hit wonder uh, called Pinball by Brian Prothero. Oh, man, I vaguely remember that. Yeah, it's a great tune. Uh, yeah. uh, I had a name drop for a second, which was played to me by Morrissey. Uh, and uh, really? I'd never heard it before. How long ago was this? It would have been... Not this summer, just gone, the right. one before. Right. I was in LA. I happened to be on a night out with him and Russell Brand. <laughs> and uh, he, uh, he... It's he, where all the best stories start. Uh, yeah, indeed. And uh, he, uh, funnily enough, when, <laughs> when we went out, he had a CD of his, not, not, of, not of Morrissey's own tunes, of, like, uh, of his favourite tunes. Right. And we were in some bar and he got the guy to put it on. And uh, we, we were chatting about whatever. And he'd suddenly go, name this tune. And we're like... I have no idea. Oh, come on. He banged his hands on the table. Oh, come on. It got to number 16 in 1974. And I'm like, I, listen, mate, I don't know. So I start with the Stone Roses for me, man. <laughs> and uh, anyway, one of these tunes was Pinball. And I'd never heard it. And uh, I was doing a tune for this app for my album, yeah. the opening track. And uh, it, it was going one way. And I had a eureka moment where I thought, ah, oh, maybe if I try it in that style, and it turned out to be the best track on the album, I think. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, I want to obviously talk about the album. You know me, I like a serious interview mm. about uh, an album, but I've got one quick question just before we go back to the records. Are the t rumours about Gogglebox true? Are you going to be on Gogglebox? I can, uh, I can, yes, I can reveal to the nation that I will be, am I not allowed to say that? Well, I'm going to say it anyway, I don't care. Uh, I will be on Gogglebox, <laughs> on, on, uh, I'm actually taping it tomorrow. Are you really? With my two very good friends, who just happen to be two wonderful supermodels, uh, Naomi and Kate, yeah. Really? Mm. So are you a fan of the programme, but before no, they approach you? I've got to say, I don't watch it religiously. I do I do watch it. Uh, I like the posh couple. They remind me of my PA and her husband. <laughs> uh, they're always drunk watching the telly. What, the but, ones who run the B&B? &B? Uh, no, I, I don't know what, what the, the one... That's, well, that fella's always drunk on red wine, <laughs> that, that guy. Um, I do watch it, but I don't... I, I'm not like... I'm not devoted to it, but... No. Um, I was on holiday with Kate, and she said, you fancy doing this thing? They've asked me to do it, will you do it? Right. So I was like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Thinking nothing had come of it, and only really now, tomorrow, I've got to go and do it. <laughs> <laughs> so it should be but a laugh, I imagine you'd be brilliant at it, though, because I imagine you do... We've, we've spoken about this before, that we've been turned into the people, I imagine you are, who sits at home shouting at the telly. I do shout at the telly a lot, and... Uh, whether they'll be able to broadcast what I shout or not is another thing altogether. But um, I'm, I, I, was, I met I met a woman out recently who, who works for Gogglebox, and she was listing all the things. She said, "Do you watch, you know, this thing called the Bake Off?" And I was like, "What's that? <laughs> What's that? A load of people cooking cakes in a competition for a laugh?" And she said, "Well, yes, that's what it is." And I was like, "What? Sounds like Monty Python. What?" And. Uh, so I'm not sure that anything I'm going to be shown I actually watch, do you know what I mean? But I'll just be saying to those two, who's this? What's that? What's this nonsense? A bake-off? Surely not. You, um, are talking seriously about TV, though, one or two ideas, and again, from what was one, I think, from the last album, there's certainly, I think, one on this album has come from a documentary. Uh, isn't there one about, which is, oh. isn't, isn't one of the tracks? Is the it even the new track, which is about uh, something to do with an astronaut and oh, something it's the first, they the It's the first line of the first single. I was watching a thing, uh, uh, a series that was on called When We Left the Earth, and it was about 
the space program mm. and it's, it's absolutely amazing and one, one I don't remember it's not one of the famous astronauts but he was asked to describe what takeoff was like you know one of these rockets and he said it's you could you know it's like touching the face of god and i thought well if that isn't the first line of the song then i'm not sure what is um and it kind of stuck in there. The song after that quickly descends into nonsense. So I want to say it's not about <laughs> it's not about an astronaut or anything godly. Uh, but um, yeah, I'm always switched on listening for things like that. Do you know mm. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So so where are we up to then? What what was the idea coming to the second album? Um, was was there something you're thinking? Well, I want to do something slightly differently. I want to. Was it about broadening out what you'd done no, on the first I mean, album? I don't. I don't sit and overthink records too much. As fate would decree with this record, I was dealt uh, with a producer that I've used for the last ten years. I went to LA and I got all my demos together and we sat in his studio and we played them. I remember coming out and saying to my manager who was there in the car saying, I don't think he was really that excited about any of that, you know, and he's, yeah, I mean, yeah, Dave Sardi, I've worked with him for years and I, he's a really good friend of mine and he, every after a time he was going, yeah, it's pretty cool, yeah, it's pretty cool and I was like, okay, well, I don't want cool, I'm great, you know what I mean? And, um, so anyway, he, for whatever reason, then he kind of said he didn't want to do it and, um, so then I... Went back to England, I did a bit more work, and then I went to see another three producers, who shall remain nameless, and they all turned me down for various uh, for various reasons. The main reason, the thing that went... The thing that was... Um, uh, what they all said was, well, it already sounds finished. Really? So I kind of then went back to... I thought, well, I'll just, well, I might as well just finish it off myself. Mm. And then I kind of just went back to where I'd started with the demos and kind of just you know, kind of filled in the blanks, really. So, with that in mind, I was kind of f free to make as many mistakes as I liked. And there's a lot of mistakes on the record, you know. There's, I will not sing a song in the studio more than three times. I refuse to do that. Whereas Dave would have me sing all day and all night to the, fact where, to the point where you'd be singing the lyrics and thinking, I hate these lyrics, what's this nonsense? <laughs> and um, so I kind of kept things moving pretty quick. I don't do a lot of takes, mm. you know. And... Um, so there's a lot of stuff on there that's... My previous album, the f first record, is very slick compared to this. This is kind of yeah. a bit rough and ramshackle and a bit kind of rough around the edges, but it's not. this doesn't suffer for it in any way. When I saw that you'd produce it yourself, I thought, that's a lot of hard work, isn't it? Has, has Noel learnt nothing? Not really. Is not it not? Really. It's, is a, it? it's, a, it's a pain <laughs> in the backside. <laughs> right. For Particularly when you're doing it in London, because as you know, you know, there's always something going on in London. And as you may be aware, I don't mind going out from time to time. And some weeks... When the, when the chance arises. Yeah, some you know, weeks were like yeah. two-day weeks, you know. <laughs> and those two days would be like screeching hangovers. I found it difficult managing the sessions. I'd be coming home on the tube thinking, what have I, what have I actually done this week? What mm. have I done? And, and then I, you go back the next week and... Because you're in charge, I didn't know where I was up to, and I'd be constantly reevaluing it. But I kind of got there in the end. Like, I mean, I finished it in June, I signed off on it, uh, you know, soon afterwards, and that. So I, I kind of did all right. You didn't do that thing where um, a band who uh, I know again who shall remain nameless did the we're going to produce ourselves, and they got through all the stuff, finished it, went yeah, records great. I mean, obviously they they, they used to work into the night, and uh, they got the so they got the tapes back. They went off to get pressed. They got the acetate back. They went wow, I got the white label. This is brilliant. Completely forgotten to mix in the backing vocals on the whole <laughs> on, on the whole record. Wow, uh, not like on this. We'll talk more about uh, the album if you missed it when we played it right at the top of the show this is new from Noel Gallagher's High Flying Birds and this is in the heat of the moment Noel Gallagher's High Flying Birds in the heat of the moment Noel Gallagher live with us uh, in the studio when you finish an album can you listen to it do you, are you one of these yeah. people who, oh you do yeah, I you're not one who puts it in the top drawer and says no, I can't listen to it for I six listen months. to it right up until the very last rehearsal then I'm, I'll listen to it to like on the way to rehearsal, I listen to it on headphones just to make sure to see where the live versions are going. As soon as I do the first gig, that's it for me. I'll never listen to it again. Really? Yeah. And that's left uh, behind. Because, because then the live versions will become what you listen to. And if I do listen back to it afterwards, I think, God, doesn't it sound slow? Because <laughs> your live versions are kind of yeah. at least a couple of yeah. BPMs faster. But um, 
Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I. I, I mean, I. I listen. I haven't listened to the album now for a couple of weeks, but I'll. I do listen to it um, a lot. You say is that why when uh, you were doing the video commentary for uh, for the oh, Oasis mate, compilation? I've already, I've already had video nightmare. Uh, this okay, album, okay. I've already got okay. one video. Okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> He's got sausages for legs. That can't be right. <laughs> Honest to God, I've had worse now. This the video, the video for that single. I've had to scrap it already. I went. I, uh, well, it's worse than sausages it, for legs. It, it, this guy, he's made five videos for me already, right? For the last five singles, so he kind of had this idea, and it was like, look, whatever you've you've smashed it with the last five, you go and do that. And anyway, the 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 the, the people in my office. I was supposed to go to LA and do it. And the people in my office. Bless them. Uh, they messed up my visa. So this guy says, well, look, it's all right, because well, I'll shoot this stuff in L.A., and what we'll do is we'll shoot you back in England against a green screen. And I was going, yeah, but won't that look weird? And he said, no, 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 no. Hey, man, movie making's all about illusions, man. So in it, the video which you'll never see, there's, some, there's a load of fit birds in, in a roller disco from like the 80s and I'm supposed to be this DJ right don't, I didn't even read the thing properly you know what I mean what's to my uh, and I should have read it when I didn't and anyway so I go to this studio in East London against the green screen and I'm pretending it, I was, oh, I'm pretending to be a DJ and I was going are you sure this is going to look alright and he's going yeah yeah don't worry it's going to be amazing so when I finally got it finished I kind of just go into my manager yeah we've got to scrap this man this actually looks this looks like what it is it looks like a lot of girls in LA, and just this guy in a, in, a, in, in a studio in East London pretending to be a DJ, which he obviously isn't. So Gone. it's very much, we shall never talk of this again. This yeah, we, yes, no it's all, we'll it's this. Never, ne it will never be seen, but it was, um, yeah, and then, and then I, I've had to do a video for this song, which is the one thing I swore I'd never do again, which was a performance video. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God, I tell you what, it was a long day. I always have videos would just take lo just take so long. Can you be a bit more animated? Oh, we've all seen the, we've all seen the thing on YouTube. It literally doesn't get any better as the decades go by. It's could you be a bit more animated? It's just like, well, I could, I could, I could if I was actually in a proper disco in yeah. 1989 in the Asiana, I could be very animated. But as I'm now a grumpy old fellow with a guitar and a bad back, this is about as good as it's going to get. Oh, we're not yeah. actors. So you're not. You're, you're not an actor. You you know. Look look at me. Look what it says on my exactly. passport. It says international <laughs> rock star. It doesn't say actor. That's doesn't the, say, I know, that's the I know, thing. but it was a long day and, yeah, but there you go. And, uh, so, yeah, you listened to the record. This time around, did you play it to anyone again? Because you sometimes play it to I don't, some of I, well, I can't play it to people. I can give them CDs right. and they can go off and listen to it. I couldn't. Right. I've had a very awkward moment around at, <laughs> around at Facebook this afternoon. Can I mention that? Can I mention that, yeah. Uh, where they, they, I was doing a thing and they... they they played a minute and a half of, the, of of that single for about fifty people while I was sat on a stage. Oh, that's like being in an A and R Yeah, it thing. was kind of awful. You know, there's kind of people <laughs> thinking, "Well, they, they weren't even very loud," and that was kind of just turned to the guy who was in the interview, going, "This is." excruciating and of course the single finishes and <laughs> the guy had to force them to clap <laughs> oh it was dreadful um but i don't i don't no i won't play it and stop, like watch people no because no matter what they did it would never be enough for me do, I mean, do, do the people though that you give cds to do they come back and do they say um yeah oh, where's that song or well, it, well, well, i think you know it's, it's amazing particularly our good friend paul weller will give you a detailed breakdown willie of uh, what he thinks now. Luckily for me, he's loved my last two records and he loves this one. So good. But he, but uh, 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 generally speaking, down the year, I remember him uh, when I played in BA now, <laughs> and he just used one word or two words, not three words. It was. What do you reckon he went? Yeah, you're coasting there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. That was it. You're coasting, and I was like. I didn't realise it was an insult till about ten years <laughs> later. But uh, yeah, he will he will tell you exactly what he thinks of it. Right down to the track listing, you've got those in the wrong order. He's, yes, he's all, well. He's he's told me that there's a couple of tracks that are on it that shouldn't be on it, and there's a couple of tracks that aren't on it that should be on it. But for him, that's pretty good because you, he will tell you. He, you know, I've had him on the phone saying, "Yeah, we like the first, the first, the first six tracks are great. The rest is rubbish." <laughs> really? He said that to me before. Yeah. Right. So this well, is at least you know. So this is a rave review essentially from the Weller. That's what it's yeah, he does, he does like it. He does like it. It makes my life a lot easier when he likes it. But um, I yeah, my 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 missus likes it. She's like the last couple of things. She's another harsh critic. Right. She's tough a harsh. Crowd. Yeah. She's tough. My kids are quite tough. Yeah, but they kind of seem to like it. Yeah. 
and Johnny Marr is on this record, he is. which sounds last, exciting. On the last, yeah. on the final track of the, is he it? is on the final track. He gets the last word. Yeah, but was, I, was, I tried to get him on the last album, and he couldn't do it. He was in, uh, I think he was in Hollywood doing something for Hans Zimmer, and at the time, and. Um, I got him down to play on the last track on the album, which will be the, the single that's coming after this, and it's brilliant. And I mean, you know, your listeners, ninety nine point nine percent, will never get, will never be in the studio with him. But it's to see him do his thing is quite something for me. You know, I mean, although I'm a fan of his and a fan of the Smiths, it's kind of gone beyond that. It's like my old one of my oldest friends, but he is amazing, an amazing character. Were, were, you, were you surprised by? Had you ever played? You so say you'd not played with him before. That's he'd done was. some. He'd done some stuff with Oasis before. Yeah. But this was a different thing altogether. And I, you know, I asked him and he said, yeah, I'll do it. And I said, do you want me to send you the track? And he said, no, I don't, I don't even want a title or, uh, uh, don't, I don't even know what the vibe is. I'll just come down and react to it on the day. Uh, and I thought, well, that's pretty brave. And, um, he was honestly, when you hear his guitar and it's amazing. And so just very quickly, um, because we're running out of time to, to news. I mean, the, the strange thing is now with a record, I mean, it's brilliant talking about it, but the difference now, you're, you're talking about, uh, you know, going before the, the Facebook jury. I used to have to wait a couple of months for some Herbert at the NME to tell you what they thought of the record. Do you, these days, it happens straight away, doesn't it? Yeah, so instant. That, that, that song will already have been reviewed by... And do you ever see see any of those things? That's funny. That's that's mm, that's quite true. That's um, idiotic. No, somebody might say, or somebody will say. You know, they'll either say it's got a great reaction, or if they don't say anything, it means <laughs> it's not got a great reaction. But I'm not really, you know, that's that, it, opinions are just that, aren't mm. they? Do you know what I mean? And well, it, well, the thing that interests me, uh, leading on from that, is how many people still use Oasis or you in some point in some part of their blueprint for a band. It's, 20 years on, we can't let that go, can we? 20 years since the first album. How, what, like new bands? Yeah, I still, th I still think there's I would a lot of people I would like around. to think that the bands, maybe not, maybe not Oasis in it, it, itself, but as a generation came after us, like the Arctic Monkeys and Kasabian, have obviously influenced other bands. I'd the, 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 thought that the spirit, somehow, mm. is being passed down. I mean, look, those Oasis records are still, one of them is still in the top 10 last week, you mm. know, and, um, so they must mean something to kids. So I don't, I don't, I don't really try and analyse it that much. So I only, you know, suffice to say that it was great then, and it was, it was, it was. So it was a pure expression of working class joy then, and it's still kind of passed down through the through the generations. So it must be, you know, the the Morning Glory album is amazing. It took you know two weeks to record that album. Mm. You know, we had three days off in the middle because we all fell out, <laughs> and. Um, I think it was the whole thing was like twelve working days or something, you know, and it was. I mean, it's an unbelievable record that it took a record that took very very little effort whatsoever. Yeah. It's still selling and and still sounds. I mean, it's, it stands the test of time. Does it? I've heard it. Yeah. I've got to say, I've not heard I've it. Got, in a I've, while. I've got to say, having gone back and listened to uh, a lot of records from that era earlier on in the year. Uh, around what we sort of pegged as we pegged the 20th anniversary of um, uh, Britpop around you playing at the Glasgow I tramway. I, I, I think, I, yeah, I, that's I probably think, the start. I think the the peak of it will be the 20 years in Nebworth. That's when it. Yeah. That's when it. Yeah. That's when it. That's when everybody went and, and, and did other things. But you know, I, you hear a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of stuff spoke about those times. You know, but they were great. You know yourself. It's like we all kind of came up together there was a thing whether it be in politics fashion and sport uh, there, there was something and uh, you know you the people in the broadsheets will say not a great deal was left behind but some of it was great some of it was great and they were great times to be young in i bet you wish you would have been there don't you yes he's not in, not you i'm not talking to steve by the way <laughs> steve wasn't talking to this chap here who's just sitting sagely scratching his chin like a radiohead fan <laughs> Listen, well, it's been lovely talking to you. I know, you I know you've got loads of other bits and pieces uh, to do. Uh, as mentioned, uh, details of the new High Flying Birds uh, album were announced today. Chasing Yesterday will be released early next year. And uh, the single uh, is called In the Heat of the Moment. Uh, there'll be a limited edition 7 each of that out in November. And Real one. So you can get it online now. There's dates as well coming up. Details on Noel's website. Thank you so much. And we shall see you Cheers, again mate. soon, hopefully. Uh, and we'll be back with some music after this. Six music. This is BBC Radio. Six Music.